Hey guys, today I want to talk about rider detection systems. As most of you know, for one wheels, that means foot sensors in the front. Yeah, there's two of them, and both of them together basically give you redundancy at speed, where only one of them is needed, and they give you the ability to disengage when you slow down, so below one mile an hour, they basically detect when you lift your heel and allow you to turn the board off. Now, when everything works correctly, this is really all we need. So, so yeah, usually that system works really well as long as the sensor works well. But there are two ways how this can fail. One, if the sensor gets stuck in the on position somehow, then we can no longer detect when the rider gets off the board. And so we assume the rider is still on, and that causes ghosting. We need the board rides off without the rider on. On the other end of the spectrum, we got the case where the sensor does not want to turn on or it turns off on its own even though the rider is still on it. And in that case, the rider can get dropped even at full speed when, uh, you know, riding and, uh, that obviously will cause a potential nosedive. So, how do we guard against that? And the answer is, it's not really easy at all. Because the two requirements of don't ghost and don't drop the rider, they are essentially on the opposite end, they're on the opposite ends of the requirements spectrum. They're literally contradicting each other. Because if you're trying to make the board less prone to ghosting, oh, hi. sorry. If you're trying to make the board less prone to ghosting, then you're making it more likely to drop the rider and vice versa. If you're being aggressive about keeping the board riding so that you never drop the rider, then you're introducing higher risks of ghosting. And people come with ideas all the time for how to solve these problems. Unfortunately, these ideas are usually motivated by one or the other extreme. So they're either just coming back from a ghosting event, and so now they're all focused on how to prevent ghosting. Or they just got dropped by their board, and now they want to make sure they never get dropped again. And so usually these ideas just go off into one extreme, and they're essentially sacrificing the other use case. So all the most of the don't drop me ideas so most of the ideas that prevent you from dropping or from being dropped they introduce or increase the risk of ghosting and the ideas people come up with for not ghosting they increase the risk of getting dropped let's talk about those ideas of how to make it better they either are, they, they fall into two categories. One is you add more sensors, and the other is you replace the sensors with something completely different. And if you replace them with something completely different, I don't know, some actual uh, mechanical pressure sensors or um, anything else, I mean, you can do that, but the problems don't really change. Whatever sensor you're using, it can still fail uh, some people use a magnetic reed switch. 
that also, I mean, you have now have the inconvenience of have, having something tied to your leg and uh, you can't jump on the board if you have, for, if you forgot to bring that thing. Um, yeah, it's, it, it would work, but it's certainly not ideal. And once you have that read switch, you also can't do body varials and other things. But for some people, this is a pretty reliable solution. And so I don't want to dismiss it. It's definitely workable, but I wouldn't call that a universal solution for everyone. Now, the other solution that people are proposing is to add more sensors. And the problem with that is that no matter what type of sensor you're adding, now the suggestions can range from adding more uh, sensors like we have them now to adding fancy stuff like LiDAR and uh, near-field communication devices and all that stuff. Basically what it does is it adds more complexity to your system, but it does not change the fundamental problem. Because you got to keep in mind, if you add a third, let's just say we add a third sensor of the exact same type to keep it really simple. We have a third ADC input and we now have a third one to look at. Well, now you got to still ask yourself, how do you treat that third one? Is that third one used to basically be an extra requirement so that it keeps going? Or is it used to be a redundant sensor that uh, if you lose it, then it stops. Right. So again, you're you're dealing with having to compromise between detecting ghosting and keeping the board going, and that's essentially the problem. So the more sensors you add, the more you have to deal with this dilemma of having to decide whether you favor on the side of ghosting or ghost prevention, or if you favor on the side of um, nosedive prevention, essentially. And in the end of the day, you're essentially just doing the same thing you did before with more complexity, with more sensors, but the two perfectly working sensors would have achieved the exact same thing. So what do you do if you do have a bad sensor? First of all, the best way to solve all of this is to install a sensor that just works. If it's not working, don't ride with it, but replace it. But let's say you are on a ride and you notice that your sensor is acting up, either sticky or it's dropping you, then you can still finish your ride safely by enabling one of two features or both of them. Uh, the first one is disable moving faults. That's a feature that will prevent the one wheel from turning off when you're above a certain speed, like two miles an hour. And that means that you can ride with confidence and not have to worry about your sensor going out. Even if both sensors aren't detected, the board will keep going, but only while riding forward. That ensures that there is no ghosting. And then for ghosting issues, what you want to do is you enable reverse stop. So that basically, as soon as the board starts going backwards, will bring the board down. Now, the reason why reverse stop is all you need to prevent ghosting is because the rear of the board is heavier. If you got some Frankenstein board with a heavy nose or something, then of course all bets are off and that those features don't really work for you. 
But uh, for the normal setup that we all have, the uh, heavier tail ensures that in a ghosting situation, the board will go backwards, and that is what reverse stop will prevent. So that's good enough to get back to your car, finish your ride, whatever, um, or at least ride it out until your new sensor arrives with the compromise of not being able to ride backwards. But at least you still get to ride, and it's safe. So that's your workaround solutions. As you can see, they're not really proper solutions because the only proper solution is to fix your sensor. All right, guys, that's it. I hope it made sense, and thanks for watching.